And if you want to play with these brushes, a really easy place to start is with a sky background because it can actually load portions of the sky to paint with. I'll option or alt click here and I'm back to my regular brush and I'll use my right bracket key to make a huge brush. As I click and drag, you'll notice it's just sweeping brush strokes in the sky. Now, if I change the wet amount to zero, it won't do anything. The brush tip isn't wet. It's only gonna paint with the fill color of the foreground. It's really not blending the existing image. So I'll undo that. But even better than choosing a foreground color to paint with, if I hold down Option or Alt and click, it's actually just loaded the clouds as a sample. So I can tell it to load solid colors only if I don't want it to grab an image, but grabbing an image to paint with can pull colors from that region. Let's try it down here. I'll hold down Option or Alt and you'll see I sampled new areas. If I come up to where the sky is mostly blue, as I click and drag, you can see I'm getting these colors from that portion that I sampled up in the top. So I'll undo, and you have two options for how this paints. You can load the brush again after each stroke, which is on right now. If I turn that off, nothing is happening because nothing is loaded. I'll turn it back on. It loaded the same image. And the second option is clean the brush after each stroke. I'll turn that off. I click and drag. I've got that image. Click and drag again. So it's starting with a fresh copy each time. If I turn that on, and I'll undo those two strokes and do roughly the same area. Click and drag, let go, click and drag again, let go. It takes a while to experiment with these to really see what's going on. And they even have presets that are saved, so you can choose whether you want it wet, dry, very wet. But let me set my wet back to 50%. And I'm going to undo, I'm going to keep doing these with different settings so you can see what they're doing. As my wet is at 50 and I click and drag, there you can see subtle blending. I'll undo, set my wet to 100%, click and drag, and it's smudging together many more colors. Sometimes it helps to zoom in on this. Now load, as you pause over each icon, it'll give you a little explanation of what it's doing. So wet is basically how much ink it's mixing into the photograph. And let's make it around 80% for wet. Anywhere between 50 and 80 is one I like. Load is how much ink is loaded on the brush, ink or paint. So let's set this to 20% and I'll click and drag. You've got a light bit of painting. I'll undo, set it to 90%, click and drag and it's gonna compound more ink with each stroke, but I'm already getting some really nice special effects. Now mixing is how much it's mixing the colors. I'll use my space bar and scoot over so I have a little bit of an empty canvas, and on the mixing, I'll go to 20%. And if you pause over it again, it lets you know what it's doing. So the mixing ratio for each stroke that you're making, so as I click and drag, there I can see the mix at 20%. It's leaving a lot of the sky in the background. If I undo, and set it to 90% and click and drag, the sky's really being blended away in the background. And then you have flow and the ability to sample all layers and also airbrush. Airbrush is kind of neat on this because when I hold still, it just keeps collecting the ink in that given spot. So what I like to do on this one is just nice big sweeping motions. And if I set it to use solid colors only, this is something you should see. So if I load solid colors only and I hold down Option or Alt to sample the solid color, it's showing me the top half is the blue I'm sampling now. Red was the previous color. Now when I paint, it's just mixing that blue in the brush stroke with the object underneath. If I Option or Alt click one of these bright yellows, click and drag to paint, it's sampling and mixing that yellow up here in the sky. So when I'm finished with this, we'll make it look like a photo that's half merged. And I'm going to collapse this down. You could even move it around if you want it off the stage a little bit more. And I'm just going to make some strokes over the sky. I've got a layer mask created, so it's okay if I paint over the buildings because I've actually got them protected underneath with a layer mask. And you really do need a lot of horsepower for this to work. 
I'm running with four gigabytes of RAM on a new MacBook Pro unibody, but I really would love to have eight. This file can get pretty complicated to mix all these blended brushes. But with just a few sweeps, I'm not an artist, I could still make something that looks painted. And I might even try combining different brush types. And you could see it drawing in the sky in the background. Now it's fast forwarded a bit to fill this portion in, so let's change our brush type. So let's try the flat angle, low bristle count brush. So it's going to be a little bit more blunt of a tip. I can hit these arrow keys to see how it's going to affect it. So it's only got a few strands. I always imagine people painting images on the top of pins <laughs> with this. But I'm going to turn off load solid colors only, and I could clean the brush to start fresh. So now I have nothing loaded into the brush. I'll hold down Option or Alt and click, and I've just loaded this portion of the sky. And now I'll click and drag, and this is nice for making individual strokes. I'll switch my brush type again, and I'll try the flat, blunt, short, and stiff brush. Again, I've still got my same pattern loaded. I'm pretty happy with the settings here, and now I'll click and drag to do a bit more blending to just paint that away. I love the texture and depth you can pick up here very easily with these brushes.